Um, <clears throat> all right. As, as, as if I can follow that beautiful gospel <laughs> message. Um, <laughs> we, will, we will try to move on. Uh, the narrow gate. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Um, I can't remember who who just said it. it. This is a more challenging law than the Sharia, and I, th- I think you're absolutely right. It's it's easy to robotically follow these ritualistic things, especially after you've been brainwashed in, into doing it. It's quite a bit harder to love your enemy. I dare you to love your enemy. I dare you to think about the person who's wronged you the most or harmed someone that you love and and find it in your heart to actually love them. That is perhaps the most one of the most challenging things that that we could ever that we could ever do, right? So um, the way that I look at this is it, it's very easy to eat the forbidden fruit, right? And we're going to kind of go back to Adam and Eve, right? The, especially the, the, the fruit, like Adam and Eve ate the tree, the, the fruit from the tree of knowledge of, of good and evil, right? Who Satan said would make them like God. It would be, that's tempting to do. It's very tempting to, to eat from that from that tree. Well, I mean, if I could be like God, then why do I need God to begin with? Right? I can make my own rules. I can make my own authority. I can define my own reality. Right? So here, here's the promise that the false promise that you get. Go, okay. Well then that means that I can go after anything I want, any hedonistic pleasure, any animalistic desire that my heart wants I can just go ahead and have it because, well, I'm the one who knows. I'm the one who knows what I can do. I'm like God. I can just define that as morally right or morally wrong, right? And even after I've defined that, even after people define that, what do they do? We talked about this. They find loopholes in their own subjective morality and their own pretending to be subjective reality, right? And to, to be honest... I think we've all gone through phases in our life where we probably ate that fruit and acted in that particular way. And if you haven't, God bless you for that. Uh, but you know, for those of us who have, we understand that as tempting and as beautiful and as wonderful it sounds on the surface, when we do that, it it turns out pretty miserably. Um, and here's the thing: the vast majority of the world goes from one hedonistic pleasure to a major letdown, to trying to find the, the next hedonistic pleasure. And what they end up trying to do is they try to, to link together as many great feeling things as they can possibly do in a row <coughs> to avoid that pain of being low again. It's a little bit like being addicted to drugs, I think. So that's the wide gate. Why is it the wide gate? Because it's easy. It's easy. I'm hungry. I eat. Right. I'm tired of sleep. I don't want to work. I don't go in. I, you know, whatever other feelings I have, I act on those on those particular desires. Um, that's easy to do. What's actually more difficult to do is to to deny yourself, to take up your cross, to follow Christ, right? To love other people more than yourself, to consider yourself lower than others, even if they're in a very lowly position. It's very difficult for the God of the universe, right? Maybe not for him, but theoretically here to to condescend to earth to stoop down and to wash the feet of his disciples and command that they do the same for others that's pretty challenging to put away your pride and your arrogance and your thought that you know best and that whatever you want to do is good and as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else whatever your excuses are right the narrow gate is really simple it's to love god and to love people. 